Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Out there on this beautiful, beautiful day. Um, I'm here for this week's edition of the walk. Uh, I know that um, you guys heard Brother Timmy last week and he brought a, a powerful, powerful message. And I know we were behind a few weeks and with all the stuff going on with quarantine and everything else, uh, we just kind of fell behind on it, but uh, thank y'all for continuing to tune in and and we're gonna uh, we're gonna keep this thing going so this week i want to talk to y'all about uh something that really been on my heart that that god really really showed me um this past week um and and it through through my you know shortcomings and things that that, uh, that I had done wrong and things, places where I was lacking, you know, God really showed me, um, something about communication. Um, and so that's what this week's title is going to be communication. And this is, this is about communication across the board. We're going to look at some biblical examples and some scripture, um, to see where the Bible stands and what the Bible tells us about communication. And, and then we'll try to apply that to our lives. So one thing is that um, the, that this affects all aspects of your life. Communication affects every part of your life, whether it be your job, your marriage, your, your kids, um, your friends, maybe struggles that you have, strengths that you have, likes, dislikes, and most importantly, your relationship with God. So think about the things that happen because of a lack of communication, okay? Um, wars, you know, because nations don't have um, the dialogue between them that needs to happen. Um, job loss, you know, because uh, uh, boss, uh, employer, and employee don't have the communication between them that needs to happen. Divorce, because a husband and a wife um, doesn't have the communication between them that needs to happen. Maybe, maybe grudges between friends, um, because they're not communicating on the, on the right level. Bad decisions because somebody doesn't, doesn't communicate their, um, their intentions or, or something like that. Um, people leave church because of lack of communication. They hear something that offends them or, or that maybe they don't understand. And instead of communicating with the pastor about it or the church elders, they just up and leave. Um, as I said, people, you know, marriages, people leave marriages because of lack of communication, you know, because they think that their partner's um, in a place where maybe they don't love them anymore or because they think their partner uh, doesn't care about them or, or isn't interested in a relationship and it's because of, of, a, of a lack of communication on both sides that those those needs and desires and things like that are being met um, and and people end up leaving relationships for whatever reason and never looking back because of a simple lack of communication because of a simple um, opportunity missed to talk so if we think about communication and how it affects us, we can look at the fact that we can trace every problem, every problem we can trace back to a lack of communication. And think about this. You ever hear somebody say um, something was just a misunderstanding? You know, well, so-and-so, so-and-so maybe got an argument and it was a misunderstanding you know it's a simple misunderstanding that got out of hand um you know people get get in a, a, a fight or and maybe somebody ends up getting seriously hurt or even worse and and it was just a simple misunderstanding that that got out of hand you know and that's because the misunderstanding happens because of a lack are improper communication because they either didn't communicate or because they did it in the wrong way um and in both of those are very and, and very much equally as important 
The thing about communication is it starts with hearing, right? So in, in James, James 1 19 tells us, it says, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to anger. So what's the only thing that James is telling us that we have to be quick to do? He don't say get the jump on somebody else. He don't say, you know, be quick, be quick to make sure you put them in their place. Be quick to respond or they're going to get the upper hand or be quick to uh, make a move or you're going to be caught off guard. He says, be quick to hear. Y'all, he's talking about to hear what's being said, to hear what's going on. Listen to what's happening so that you can make an informed decision so that you can understand where things are coming from, where things are going, all these things, and be slow to speak. That doesn't mean talk slowly. That means think about what you're saying before you see it. And uh, make sure, you know, that, that the response is a good one. It says... Uh, And don't and it says be be slow to anger, which which he's saying is don't get yourself worked up. You know what I mean? Don't don't hear something and freak out about it. Don't hear something and jump into an angered response. Be slow to speak and don't get yourself worked up. Most times, you know, we only listen to quickly respond and win. The situation get the upper hand on the situation we don't want to be the underdog right we want to be on top we want to make sure that we're constantly ahead of the game right and so that's what happens we end up listening only to quickly respond we're not hearing what's really being said we're just listening so that we can have an, a, a quick witty response that's a sure way to fail and a sure way to wreck relationships, a sure way to cause a problem, a sure way to have a disagreement, a sure way not to understand what somebody else is saying. You see, oftentimes we're not looking to understand anything. We just want to give our opinion. We just want to put in our two cents, you know, and, and we look at to, to get advice on this, we look at the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs 18.2 tells us, it says, it says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. A fool takes no, no pleasure in understanding. So then what's the opposite of that? What's the opposite of a fool? A wise man? What's the opposite of, you know, uh, taking no pleasure in understanding? Well, the opposite would be taking pleasure in understanding. So if a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, then a wise man must take pleasure in understanding. Because what it's saying right here is the fool don't want to understand. All he wants to do is get his part in. He just wants to give his opinion. He just wants to give his two cents. He just got to get something off his chest. He's not worried about what anybody else is saying. He's not worried about anybody else's feelings. He's not worried about how it affects anybody else. He's only worried about how it affects himself. So the result of this is always bad. It's never good. And it may not be immediate, but it will catch up right and you will you will end up losing something important to you because of it because you don't take pleasure in in understanding and because you want to express your your opinion it's going to catch up to you and you're going to lose something important to you and it's going to be like this it's going to be maybe a job it's going to be maybe a marriage it's going to be maybe a a, a, a 
relationship. It, it might be a brother or sister. It might be your kids. Um, and it's going to be hard to come back from. All because of lack of communication or improper communication on the front end. So here's the thing. So if, if we can get past this and we can say, okay, so now let's start communicating. Look, God, God, he, he had to pop me back the head a couple of times to get me across with this because one of my biggest struggles I know now, and I, I think I've known in the past, maybe I was in denial, but one of my biggest struggles is communication. And when I say that, I don't mean I have a problem with talking to people. I don't mean I have a problem with going up to somebody, you know, and making friends with somebody or whatever. I have a problem with being uh, vulnerable to somebody. So I don't communicate those things. I look, I analyze things before I say it or before I let somebody know how I feel. And if it looks like it'll make me vulnerable or if it looks like it'll make me look weak, then I just don't say it. I keep it to myself. And what happens? It starts building up, starts balling over. You know what I mean? And before you know it, I'm causing misery for myself and I'm affecting the other person that I'm not communicating with or improperly communicating with in a negative way. And now they think something's wrong with me. They think that, you know, I have a problem with them or whatever. So moving forward, when, when we get to the point where we can say, okay, I understand that. Yes, I know this is what we got to do. Once we're communicating, and we're being open with one another, not judging, but in love, hearing, then we can move forward finding peaceful, mutual, beneficial solutions. Something that benefits both sides of the table. Um, a peaceful understanding for each other's shortcomings. A peaceful understanding for each other's intentions and desires and things like that. And we look at, uh, for this one, we look at Romans um, chapter 14 verse 19 says so then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbringing so then let us pursue what makes for peace and mutual up building so let us go after what makes for peace let's go after the things that create peace the things that are peaceful chase down peacefulness strive to get it and this this produces a mutual upbuilding what's the opposite of upbuilding tearing down right look the opposite of upbuilding is tearing down and we see it way too often in today's world it's blowing up around us right now but we see it on a daily basis it's constant. There's no upbuilding. People tear each other down to try to get ahead, to try to gain a foothold, to try to pull a lead in something. They tear each other down, and it's it's worthless, man. It's it, there's nothing good about it. And so we need to we need to chase down peacefulness and strive to get it. Like we gotta work at getting peace. We gotta work at gaining a peaceful understanding between each other so that we can produce a mutual upbuilding, mutual upbuilding coming from both sides, building each other up. Both sides will be encouraged and built up and peace, joy, and love will be restored in that situation. And that's a guarantee. Look, I told you, you know, this was a struggle of mine. God spoke to me about it. He really brought it out in the open really showed me some things and as soon as soon as I made an effort to communicate things started changing instantly instantly and look y'all this is important between you know in our home lives this is important between a husband and a wife this is important between a dad and his children a mom and her children a brother and a sister friends uh, a pastor in his congregation all of that but guys this is extremely important between you and God communication is extremely important 
You want to hear from God? Then do something to hear from God. Get in his word. Pray. Take the time to share your heart and your thoughts with him. And I promise you, he's going to take the time to share his heart and his thoughts with you. And you guys will be on the same page. You guys will have a peaceful understanding of each other. You guys will be sharing in a mutual relationship that builds up both of you. Look, God's intentions are way better than ours. Always. And his intentions are for our good. We just need to come around and have good intentions for him. So I hope this helps y'all like it helped me this week. Uh, really, you know, and besides my home life, um, just in ministry and friendships and all that. But look, with everything that's going, going on in society around, like, around our country right now, this is important. This is a big, huge part of it. And until we get to the point where we can communicate peacefully and together in, in a proper way, we're going to struggle in this. We're going to struggle with um, things in society. We're going to struggle with people talking about racism and, and things like that. And, and I just want to pray for everybody. And I want to pray for y'all before I leave and pray for all of us, uh, truthfully. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'm going to let y'all go. Uh, Father God, Lord, we just want to thank you for the day, Father. We want to thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord. We want to we want to thank you for uh, everything, everything, Father, that you bring to our hearts, God. The things that you show us and the points, the points that you make to us, Father, about uh, this week for me it was communication, Father. And I ask that you open the lines of communication between everybody in our country in our world father between nations lord between people between husbands and wives between brothers and sisters between uh, parents and children father most importantly father uh, help us to open the lines of communication between you and your children god lord we thank you for that father we thank you for your heart in this thank you for showing us the true culprit of the problem father and where we have to start in order to fix things god Lord, we just love you. We thank you. Father, we want to pray for everybody who who this message falls upon their ears, God. We want to pray for them, their families, Father, inside and out, Father, up and down. May their cups overflow, God, and may they be blessed coming and going. Lord, in your mighty name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you all, guys. Hey, look, don't forget to share this video. Make sure that you like us. Uh, uh, like the video. Make sure that you... Um, subscribe um, and put it out there check us out on Facebook um, and on the web at 413 outdoors.org uh, got a lot of good stuff coming up so stay tuned love y'all see y'all next week